G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Modified. We have a very unique vehicle, very unique. A Defender 100. What is a Defender 100? We'll find out very soon. All right, here we are, we've moved to the shade. And you can hardly see this thing. If you didn't know it was here, you'd probably walk into it. Luke. G'day mate, how you going? Good mate, how are you? Not bad. Good to see the beast on the road. Yeah, she doesn't get out too much, but finally got her out for a day. I normally see it parked at your workshop, but yeah. <laughs> here it is. Yeah, no, she's out in the wild. On the, on the big tires as well. Yeah, where she belongs. Yeah, well you can hardly see it. No, no, <laughs> that's what everyone says. I get all the camo jokes. <laughs> so there's a lot more to this vehicle than meets the eye. Yes. Um, a lot of people think it's an ex-army vehicle. It's 100% not an army vehicle. I'll, I'll let you take it away. And you also bought it off one a of your mates. A very good friend of mine, yeah, yeah. So I didn't build this. I, a very good friend of mine built this many years ago. And it's a it's a vehicle I saw in a full drive action, oh sorry, full drive monthly um, magazine in 2005, I think I saw it. I've actually got the magazine in the car. Yeah, awesome. And I just thought this would be a really, really cool car to get hold of. And the guy lived in New South Wales at the time and then years went by. Ever since I met him, I said, if you're ever going to sell this vehicle, I want it. But he said, the list is that long. You're never, ever going to get this car. And I went, yeah, cool. And then, oh, I think it was about two years ago, he um, comes to me. He goes, look, I'm going to sell the 100. And I was like, okay. And he's like, do you still want it? And then the next day, it was mine. And here we are today. <laughs> How's that? That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's very cool, yeah. Defender 100. A lot of people will be thrown off now. What the hell's a Defender 100? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's pretty much... Um, it's a hybrid. This vehicle is a hybrid. It's got, it's a Range Rover Classic chassis, which is obviously a 100 inch wheelbase where you get the 100 from. Uh, it's got a Defender front end. It started its body life as a Series 3 panel van. So the two door long wheelbase before, you know, as a series, it was before it was a Defender. Yeah. Um, it's got a 1HD FT Toyota motor in it, five speed 60 series gearbox, 60 series transfer case. Um, the whole thing's just a bit of everything and a lot of custom built stuff. That's crazy. Yeah, it, and it's fully engineered for the road as well. And there's all this other stuff going on. All oh, yeah, the, you've got. I, yeah, think, I think we just better get into it. Yeah, we should, yeah. <laughs> there's there's so a lot much to do. Going on, eh? Well, here we are. I've changed up a bit on the configuration on this video because there is so much going on. And let's talk about game changing stuff. This. This, this is, this is old. This is completely game changing from back in the day. Nothing like what people call game changing today. So let's get stuck into this. Cause this is, this is the core of four wheel driving, the core of modifying. This is probably the most modified vehicle I've ever lent against. Let's start with the exterior. I mean, right. the, where maybe, maybe explain to us how, yeah. the, how the body is. Where do you want to start? So pretty much, it started this from the firewall backwards, started life as a series three two door panel van body. I think people, yeah, panel van body, that's what I call them. So from the firewall back is a series three panel van. Okay. From the firewall forward is Defender 110, 90, 130. It's a Defender front end, Defender front window as well. The chassis is from a 1988 Range Rover Classic, which is where we get the 100 inch, the Defender 100 from, because it's obviously, Range Rover Classics came out as a 100 inch wheelbase. So this body has been cut 10 inches in the middle and shortened, and then cut eight inches down the back and just bobbed up. That's how it, why it looks like it fits in the wheel arches perfectly, because the body's actually been cut down to suit this chassis, and this wheelbase, I should say. That's crazy. Yeah, so it's got cost custom made body mounts. Like everything on it is custom. Oh, the custom long arms, they're all hand built. Um, so it's got it's got long arms, I think about four or 500 mil longer than factory. And when you say long arms, they're, they're bloody yeah, long. They're, they're meeting in the middle, <laughs> so you can't get any better than that. Uh, it's got custom shock hoops, like everything, everything about the body and the chassis. It's just a big mismatch of different cars. It is, it's must take a long that. time to yeah, I would, put I would have to ask my mate who built it, but I think it took him a couple of years to build it. And I think he, in the late 90s is when he started it. And I think it was finished in about 1999, as it is today, pretty much. Okay. I haven't changed anything on it, apart from put some bigger tyres on it when I go off-road. 
And the paint that's on this vehicle, that's the actual military or yeah. ar army spec? Yeah, so the guy who built this car had a mate that used to spray paint for the Australian Defence Force. And yeah, so this paint is from military vehicles. Which is why it looks like a military vehicle. Yeah, but it's not. <laughs> but you've also got all the attachments on here and... Yeah, yeah, no, I've got the, yeah, yeah. the shovel and all that so I can do some mining, digging a hole, can do all this sort of stuff. PTO winch on the front, I see. Yeah, PTO out of a 60 series Land Cruiser. So it's a Toyota winch. Toyota winch, yeah. <laughs> Using the good parts. Oh, you got the old symbol here too. Yeah, it's the old Toyota a, symbol. Actually, no, this is out of a 40 series, sorry. Yeah, the, the winch is out of PTO out of a 40 series Cruiser. Uh, the front bar here is custom made just to look like a military one. So this is all stainless steel. And you've got the blackout lights too. Yeah, it's got, this has got blackout as well, yeah. They, I don't think, yeah, they, they, these lights don't work, they're just there for show. That's why it's so confusing, because you, you think it's an ex-army car. Yeah. Because of this, yes. the paint the and blackout, the blackout. Yeah, everyone, a lot of people that come up to this vehicle think it is a Parenti, but it's definitely not a Parenti. Yeah. What's this? Um, that bike? is a, I can weld, so this is running twin alternators. And yeah, we can arc weld off the front of it. You can, you can arc weld off arc the front. Weld, yeah, so pretty much if you, it's running twin alternators and we just do a configuration and then we've got a switch <laughs> to turn the regulators off and the more you rev the car, the more amps you get. Uh, I think we can get up to, I think it's like 120 amps with it roughly. But I can, I can I didn't bring any of that set up today, but I can show you one day and yeah, she, she, arc, she arc welds pretty well. <laughs> custom bar. Yep, all custom. To custom. suit the, is this a, is a bar from a Toyota to suit the winch? No, or? no, no. This is purely custom made, this bar. To sort of look like a military sort of front end, mm. um, but to obviously to suit the Toyota PTO as well. Okay. Because if you look at the Parentis, they do have bull bars that look quite similar to this. Yeah, they're similar. Yeah, similar sort of yeah. stuff with like no, nothing under here. It's just the tube work. But yeah, it's just made to look like a, a, a military vehicle, really. That's awesome. Yeah. So what spotties we got behind these covers? Just a set of the old Rally, how Halla Rally 2000s they are. Halogens. Halogens, yeah, so they're they're pretty bright at night. Yeah. <laughs> they're a bit of, yeah, so they're all cracked and Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> They've had a bit of a hit. Yeah, no, I hit a tree last year at the W four challenge, so I smashed them. I've got some new ones sitting at home for it. I just <laughs> can't bring myself to modernise this vehicle too much. Oh, so you use this in a four drive competition challenge? Yeah, I'm in the the W four Team W four, which is a Land Rover Club. Ah. And they do a challenge um just north of Perth every year. Yeah. So I usually I know one, head yeah. long to that and yeah, go test the old girl out. Let's move down to the back. I'm yep. sure there's more going on. Cool. To complete the bodywork, we are around the back of the vehicle. Yeah, so there's no no thrills around this side. Oh you got a pintle? Yeah, pintle hook. And they've got a race hitch there as well, so you put a race hitch up that way. So you can tow ah, pintles cool. and yeah, just your normal trailers. Uh, it's pretty much well, it's got a custom-made rear door. All you need is a number five trailer, mate. I've got one at home. You got yeah, one? Yeah, I've got one, yeah. So we, I'll tow that around a little bit with it, but not a huge amount yet. Uh, the back, yeah, the back's pretty much custom-made rear door, custom-made wheel carrier, custom-made tail light holders and jerry can holders, just like on a Parenti. It's just a copy of how mm. the Parentis are brought out. And other than that, it's not really much else going on with it. Is that the custom part up here? Yeah, That's... so what it is, so obviously on a Defender, if you know Defenders, the door is actually this whole section here. Uh -huh. um, but we've actually, it's actually got a storage compartment built into the roof up here. So you can chuck all your, well, I chuck all my clothes in that there if we're doing wet weather sort of stuff. Oh, cool. Because it never gets wet. And it was this custom made door to suit you having that overhead storage. And you get quite a bit of stuff in there. I've mm. got a hoochie, put all my clothes up there. Pretty much. It's got two inch, it's only got a two inch lift in it. The car looks really high because- wow. it's only two inch? Two inches, yeah, because I looked up the part numbers not long ago on these coils and they're only two inch king coils. Oh. Uh, the reason why it looks so high is because when the body was put on, the mounts have been made to suit it, so the body does sit quite high off the chassis. Uh, so yeah, it's got two inch lift in it. It's got 10 inch, it's got custom, custom shock towers built front and rear in it and it's got 10 inch uh, Fox remote reservoir shocks. It's got these custom arms, which is a really big talking point for everyone that sees this vehicle. Like <laughs> people see these arms and just go, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. So yeah, it's got custom custom long arms in it, two inch lift. Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty basic setup, the suspension on it, but it works really well. 
Those arms are huge, man. They are, yeah. And, and they are thick. They are, yeah. So they were all handmade by um, the guy who built it. Handmade? Yeah, because it was before. Oh, they have to be, wouldn't they? Well, yeah, at the end of the day, <laughs> when this car was built, you couldn't just ring up a full drive shop and go, oh, I want some custom-made arms. He, yeah, he built it all at home in his shed. Yeah. When I bought the car, he actually gave me uh, another spare arm as a template. So if I ever break one or bend one or want to build another chassis like this, I've already got an arm sitting there. So he made five when he first built the vehicle. I reckon if you bend one of these arms, you've got bigger problems. If I bend one of these <laughs> arms, I think we'll be dead. <laughs> they are heavy, but they work. And as I have managed to bend them and nor did the original owner. The chassis on the old Land Rover is pretty, pretty yeah, solid. Too, I think it? they're three mil. I've never actually looked too hard, but I'm pretty sure they're three mil. Mm. Um, most chassis are three mil, but yeah, they're, they're a good solid chassis, the Range Rover chassis. I see your tanks on the back there. Yeah, 100 litres custom tank. Well, let's go full circle back to the tyres now. Yep. So the tyres are a, these are my play tyres. I, I definitely don't run these every day. Yeah. Uh, these are a 35 by 11 and a half Simex Centipede. I've had them for many years, these tyres, and they're just a good all round tyre. Definitely not as good as a Trep or anything like that, but this is the sort of the next best thing that I've found. Uh, they've been on multiple cars I've had. But on the road normally, I run a, what is it, a Toyo Open Country Mud Terrain, a 225.85.16. So it's a really tall, skinny tyre. It's just the, ah. the tyre a lot of people with Land yeah. Rovers run. So I thought I'd keep it with the theme. The tall skinnies. The tall skinnies, yeah. What's the size in inches? On the... um, I think the 225s are like a 33.7. Okay. By 10 and a half wide. So these aren't that much taller than, these are 35s, right? These are 35s. I chucked them up next to each other yesterday when I was changing the wheels over. And the two two fives are probably only about, oh, maybe that much shorter. Okay. But these are a tall skinny as well. That's why I like running these tires on this car. Because most 35s are your 12 and a half or your it's 315. Very wide. Where these are only 11 and a half inches wide. Yeah, you'd be poking is, a lot more then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'd love to put a set of treps or something on it, mm. but then I don't want to be sticking out the wheel arches 10 metres either. <laughs> Keep it skinny. <laughs> We're talking about drive line now because there's so much going on. Now we've got a Toyota motor, so I assume we have the, the gearbox to pair it and then we go down and we end up at the final drive, which looks very bloody braced. Yeah, <laughs> so pretty much it's a, it's a 60 series five speed gearbox with a 60 series transfer case. The transfer case has got a custom made low range, uh, like reduction gear in it. Cause when this car was originally built, you couldn't buy a reduction gear off the shelf for it. Okay. So the guy who owned this vehicle was a fitter and machinist. Well, he is a fitter and machinist by trade, I should say. And he custom made the reduction gear for it. And we've worked out to be about 85% reduction. 85% yeah, reduction. Yeah, when I bought the car, he actually gave me another gear that he custom made at the same time in case that one ever broke so then we can pull it out and put the same gearing back in it but uh, you can buy all this stuff off the shelf now but when it was first built it was mm. actually a custom made gear wow um and then pretty much from the transfer case because it's toyota to land rover the custom made tail shafts to go from your toyota to land rover the front diff is a defender county diff which is fully braced as you can see it's got every plate under the sun welded on it um <laughs> It's got maxi drive uh, locker in the front. It's got maxi drive CVs, maxi drive uh, drive flanges, and maxi drive axles. So the whole thing's just completely, yeah, braced and everything. The rear diff is a Salisbury. It's a big Salisbury diff, which is also a Dana 60. If you want to get real technical, mm. but it's just a it's a rebranded Dana 60, pretty much. That's the same deal. It's got uh, maxi drive locker in the rear. Maxi drive drive flanges, maxi drive axles, so it's pretty bulletproof. And that's all chrome ollie? That's all chrome ollie, yeah. And I've noticed you also painted the rear diff white as well. Yeah, that's just for the blackout, so yeah. you've got a little light shining yeah, on yeah. at night so you can be seen in the dust. Wow, so unless you really know your cars, you see this, you're gonna think it's one of those frontline machinery ones. A hundred percent, man. Like a lot of people come up to me and go, oh, this is a really good military car. Um, because it does look like a Parenti. It's as simple as that. It's more bulletproof than one of those. Well, yeah, <laughs> it would be 100%. And it's probably a bit, shouldn't say it, it's probably a little bit more reliable as well. Yeah, yeah, well, I reckon. It's all Toyota, it's all Toyota um, motor gearbox. So yeah. you can't really go wrong. Wow. And it's got a 
fair bit of get up and go as well compared to a Parenti. I don't know if you've ever driven one, but they're definitely no speed machine, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, we got the heavy bonnet open, the aluminium heavy bonnet. Yeah, with all the heavy tools on it. <laughs> First thing I'm noticing, there are, well, it's a Toyota motor. And the second thing I'm noticing, you've got twin fuel filters in here too. Talk us through the motor. All right, so this is probably my favourite part of this car, is everyone thinks it's a Land Rover, but when you open the bonnet, it's a Toyota. Uh, the motor is out of a 97... 80 series, so it's the 1HD FT motor, which is the factory turbo diesel motor of that era. Twin filters, we, the guy who built it, custom built, like did it like that because he was real funny when he did a lot of remote travel about getting water in his fuel. So it's always had the twin filters on it since it's been built. It's got the endless air compressor. This is an aircon pump out of a Toyota Corona. Like I think it's a... Corona? Or, yeah, Toyota yeah. Corona. Like, um, I think it was a 1980s Corona that pumps out of and has been converted into an endless air, air compressor. Oh, wow. That thing will pump up. Yeah, no so time. we've compared it to um, an ARB twin compressor. And it's, yeah. if, when you put the idle up on this, it probably pumps the same as an ARB twin compressor, which that's pretty good for how old it is. And yeah. it's pretty simple setup. It's also running twin alternators. Because um, it's got twin batteries, um, it's running an alternator for each battery. So that's something that's pretty different to that no one else really runs wow. either. So if one alternator does, you know, pack it in, you've still got another alternator running in the other battery. That's amazing. So it's just, yeah. Just... You, you know what's most amazing about this? This is 19, you did all this in 1990. Uh, no, 1997 or 19... Oh yeah, sorry, because sorry. the motor, yeah. Yeah, the, the motor's 97. I'm pretty sure this What did you have in it before then? Um... When he first finished his car, he had a oh, five-litre Commodore motor in it, like an early 90s, like you know, like the VN uh, Commodores. Yeah, yeah. It did have a five-litre Commodore motor in it, but then when he decided to start, he wanted to do some remote travel, that's when he got this, and I'm pretty sure it was the early 2000s, maybe 2000, 2001 is when he put this motor in this mm. vehicle. Yeah, cool. With a five-speed box and all the rest of the stuff. Custom-made snorkel that he did all himself. It's an 80-series radiator. Out of a yeah, eighty series. So it pairs the motor. Yeah, so it pairs the motor, and, and you know what? To be honest, it actually all fits really well. So I was just thinking that, yeah, because yeah, it's a big motor. It is, and it doesn't look out of place when you look no, at it. No, doesn't. No, nah. and the motors that Land Rover normally put in, they're quite small and compact. Yeah, they are, and well, this would have come out with. Oh, it depends. Yeah, it depends on which part of the car, but they usually come out with a four cylinder. So he hasn't extended a firewall or anything. Uh, I think the firewall is cut. In the middle down there because it looks like it's been welded and like sick, sick of flexed a bit yeah. but when you go into the inside of it you can't, you can't really tell. tell so yeah. yeah i think it has been modified a little bit man a little bit yeah <laughs> this this is awesome all right you'll never guess the fuel consumption on this car oh guessing game i would have to assume oh it's got a good motor isn't it mm, but still all mechanical fuel pump and everything well, you sound like you're pleased, so I'm going to say 15. Nah, so the last time I checked, which was a week ago when I filled it up, it was 9.2 litres per 100. 9 point, no, 9.2. 9.2? Yeah. No way. Yeah, when I've got these tyres on, it goes up to about 12 or 13. Yeah. But yeah, no. with the normal tyres on it, it's 9.2 litres per 100. Far out. It's a light vehicle, but. Yeah, that's incredible. It is. And the diff gears are done. Look how square it is. Yeah, no, it's a brick. 9.2. Mm. Damn. It's not bad. That's pretty good. That 100 litres is going to get you pretty far. Yeah, I think we get... With, with your jerry, you'd be getting yeah, about 1,000 k's. Yeah, well, yeah, just, like, yeah, just over 1,000 k's I think we've done before, isn't it? That's incredible. Yeah, it's good. For a vehicle this age. Yeah, better than some of the modern cars. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Yeah. It's better than my bloody Hilux. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely better than my 200, that's for sure. Down to the back. Well, as we spoke about before, custom made rear door. Yeah. To obviously allow for this bulkhead that's been put in here. That's cool. And um, before we go up there, you got a bit of a table, table there. Right? there, yeah, for 
making me coffees and stuff on. Sweet. And that hockey strap there is to hold the door open when it's windy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing too flash, but it works. <clears throat> so this is how we carry stuff in here, eh? Yeah, this is the rear setup I run when I just go out the boys for a weekend wheeling away. Swag, cooking stuff, seat. That's got me billy, a little cooker in it. Oh, your cooking pan. gear and what? Yeah, yeah, my cooking gear in that. It's got all my recovery gear and that's in these lockers left and right down oh, there. Oh, cool. Like oh, this one here? Yeah, ah. recovery gear in there. Uh, 40 litre water tank down the side here, stainless steel one. And it's got the fridge down the front, a little 35 litre ingle. That's all we really need to for a couple of days away. What's in the big box here? Uh, a few tools, spare CVs, coolant, power steering fluid, just all the the bare minimum stuff in case we do have a breakdown. So what is the weak link in the drive line on this vehicle? <sighs> Axles and CVs in these. Okay. But it has got chrome -oly CVs, chrome -oly axles, everything, dry flanges, the whole lot. It's got everything's aftermarket chrome -oly in it, so. So you've got to push pretty hard to yeah, break Yeah, to break the diffs in this, you have to be pushing real hard. Okay. I've never broken anything yet, but either then I haven't pushed this car as hard as I probably could either. Quick touch wood. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed the seats are back further. Yeah, so the bulkhead allows you to bring the seat right back. And then once the bulkhead was cut out, it's got the twin hoop um, rollover bar in it with all the seat belts and that connected to it. Oh, wow. So you can go silly. Yeah, you can go silly. Yeah, I mean, mm. it'd be all right. You might, you'd probably hurt yourself if you barrel rolled it down a hill or something, but <laughs> yeah. I don't plan on doing that. We'll go to the front of the cabs shortly. But... Yeah. What's with the red and white light? So there? white light's just your normal interior light, and the red lights um, oh, your blackout. And obviously, at night time, I run the red light. What's it like driving at night with a red light? That um, pretty pretty awesome because you can see, but it doesn't. You can still see out. Yeah, you right? don't lose your you don't lose your night vision. Yeah. Obviously, I so want to do that tomorrow. Yeah, car, yeah, right? yeah. Um, <laughs> it's good for like reading. I mean, when I reading maps, I still mm. read maps. I'm pretty old school. I don't have a GPS in this car. If we go out stupid places, I take maps. Yeah. Because it's just... Can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with a map. And with, if you know how to yeah. read a map and you've got a compass, you don't need a GPS. Um, Perfect. Depending on what I'm doing, we, uh, we still read maps. And then obviously at night when you're reading a map, the red light's good because you don't lose your night vision and you can yeah. read them really well. I know you've got two kids, but there's only one seat in the back. Yeah. So when I first got it, it was only a two-seater. Um, and I've made a bracket, so that, that rear seat there is out of a Disco 4. So it's the, it's the third row seat in a Disco 4. Mm -hmm. So I've made a bracket and so we've got a third seat in it. And it's all engineered and mod plated or whatever you want to call it. It's all certified with that sure. seat in it. But I am thinking about building a twin forward facing seat in the uh -huh. middle. Uh, just so that way the wife, the, my wife and kids can come away with us. Okay. And then we'll just tow the trailer behind it. And you're going to do it removable seats? Yeah, 100%. So, so you still do this? Yeah, yeah. So mm. the seats will only be in it if we go away with the kids. Um, but it'll be bolted to the floor and I'll probably bolt it through there. So it'll be like maybe 10 bolts holding it in. Sure. And all the seat belts and that will be built into the seat. So then you just pull it straight out and it's just a no-brainer then. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that is... The rear cover, and that's your storage up here. Oh, yeah, yeah so you got all your soft stuff up here. Yeah, so I've got to hook you up there, rope, and you just chuck all my clothes up there if it's raining in that, because sure. it's a Land Rover that they, they get wet on the inside when it's raining, so <laughs> <laughs> nothing gets wet up there. So anything you want kept dry, you just chuck up from the roof there. Now, the front of the, well, what is it? this part is the, it's called the Defender? Or yeah. the, are you in the Series 3 or the Defender part at the moment? Well, it's a Defender Dash, so it must be a Defender. It must be. Up to here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Run us through, mate. Run us through the switches first. All right, um, there's switches. Some hilarious things going on here. So we've got spotlights, front and rear lockers. And they illuminate here? Yeah, so when the lockers are on, oh, the car's off, but when the lockers are on, rear comes up. Front comes on, and so you know they're on, so you can turn them on and off if you need to. Maxi drive. Maxi drive. They are the lockers. That I don't think they exist anymore. Maxi drive. It's another company that does them, but Maxi drive were the company to go to back in the day for that, this sort of stuff for Land Rovers. Okay. Um, that's the endless air compressor on, and that's the welding button. So, so when you want to weld, flick that, and it's the go button. Start welding. <laughs> and then obviously we've got blackout. So blackout obviously blacks everything out, mm. turns the red light on. Um, that's your 
endless air gauge, so it goes up to 100 psi in the air tank. Uh, and then everything else is, is, is this a real basic interior. There's an air tank, is there? Yeah, there's an air tank underneath, yeah. So you can run air tools? Yeah, I can, yeah. So I've got an air blower connected up. I've always got an air blower on me as well. Awesome. Um, it's like a toolbox on wheels. It is, yeah, yeah. A toolbox under the seat here, obviously, as well, like all Land Rovers. So Where's the battery then? On so the passenger side? Under this, two batteries are under this seat. Okay. Um, I've got tool, all my tools and that under here. Pretty basic dash. I've got one voltmeter for one alternator, the other voltmeter's down here for the other alternator. Temperature gauge, oil pressure, boosts for all the boosts it's got. <laughs> um, fuel gauge and a taco and a clock. That's all That's all you need. you got two old GME Electro phones up there. Yeah, yeah. so the old GMEs, one's an AM, one's a UHF. I, I think it's their UHFs or would they be CB, Citizen Band maybe back then? Yeah, I'd say it'd be Citizen I Band. Think, I think that's a CB and that's an AM one. Um, this one here, I've got no idea how to use it. Yeah. This one here, I sort of do, but... So what are you using for your comms at the moment? Because you were talking to me. Yeah, I've just got one of these GME little handhelds, brand new thing. Works pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. But I want to get, I want to get, um, yeah, some new stuff up there eventually. So all in good time. The aircon buttons here. <laughs> you just, yeah, just aircon flip. button or lever? No, there's two aircon <laughs> levers, yeah. So when it's really hot, you just flick yeah. them open and yeah, she's got free aircon. If you haven't had a shower for a while, you just run through a river. Yeah, exactly. When it rains, it, when it when it rains, you get a good splash through the dash. Oh, you would do too, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> um, PTO controls down here. They're actually a five-speed because you've got one, two, three, four, five gears. So you've got five gears in reverse, five gears going oh, reverse and forward. Which means you can't drive at the same time you're winching. No, you can't. That's one thing I'm not a big fan of with a PTO is that you can't drive when you're winching, mm. but it pulls, it pulls, good. it pulls good. Like when you're in fifth gear and you're revving it at about, you know, 1500, it's going pretty quick. Would you say it's on the level with a comp winch when it goes that quick or? No. No, okay. No, definitely So not. one must be very bloody slow. One is really slow. Five, oh, five's probably, Maybe the same as a standard high mount with nothing done to it. Okay. Like it goes good, but it's not. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely not. It fast. goes faster than a normal winch. Then. Yeah, it, it's faster than your normal electric yeah. winch. Obviously, the car has to be running, but you. It, mm. But then, with electric winches, if your car's not running, you melt your batteries after a while doing yeah. a lot of heavy winching. You got two alternators, so you'd be. It's right. got two alternators, <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it loves it. Do you want um, to talk us through your customized? Oh, the um, cruise, control. cruise control. Yeah, so because this car's you know pretty technical. Um, when I bought it, I like, asked my mate, like, what, what's the deal with the block there? And he goes, when you jam your foot in there like that, that's 100, 110 k's an hour. Um, it's good to go. You just forget about what you're doing and that's the cruise control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, other than that, a cigarette plug up the top. Oh, the old ciggy lighter? Yeah, ciggy lighter. Left and right, so you got all the power and for lighting your durries. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> no, that's funny. Um, you know ones that used to pop out? Well, imagine yeah. that falling in your lap. That'd be nice if that fell in your lap, I reckon, while you're driving. <laughs> and yeah, so it's got them on the you know, uh, left and right. Um, yeah, as I say, it's real. It's just a basic car. It's really just old It's school. cool. It's basic. Old school and it's cool. Yeah. And the doors are pretty simple. They've got little pouches mm. to store your stuff. There's no sound deadening, there's, there's nothing. Love the windows. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're good. As you can see, they seal really well. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a metal frame because there's rust here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone that says Land Rovers don't rust have never owned a Land Rover. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, steel, they're all steel frame with the alley skins. Alrighty, Q&A. Oh, here we go. Questions and answers. I'll take my sunnies off too, eh? Yeah, right, because I'm squinting. Might make it <laughs> yeah. fair. <laughs> what is this vehicle to you? Whew, that's a hard one. This vehicle to me is, it's a one-off vehicle. It's different. As you know, I came from racing patrols and I've been a patrol man my whole life. But this vehicle here to me is, no one else has got it. It's built well. It's old school and it works. That's that's this vehicle to me, and the guy who built this vehicle is is a, is he's a legend. Yeah. What's his name? Mark Marcolini. And he's, when when did he first start this 
build? I'd have to ask him, but I'm pretty sure it was like the mid nineties. He's pretty well known in New South Wales. Uh, he used to build drag cars for a living and he's a very good man to talk to. He was one of the first people in the world to make an adapter kit for a 350 Chevy FJ40. And when I first met him, it was a bit, he told me about this, you know, I was one of the first people in the world to do this. And I thought, ah, this guy, like, what's he talking about? And then he brought a magazine in from the late sixties, a four wheel drive magazine in, from America. And his name's in it, like made, he's made all the adapters and one of the first people in the world to put a big block Chev into a 40 series Land Cruiser. <laughs> and yeah, he's got, he's got the magazines to prove it from back then. So he, he's, he's just a legend, you know, like he's, he's very, very, just a smart old guy. He's building something else now, I understand. He's just finished building a, a 2B Ford Control, same sort of deal, tow to motor, tow to gearbox with a full camper body on it. Uh, he's built quite a few cars over the years. Like he had a Range Rover two-door with 60 series diffs, um, 1.8 Z motor, all the stuff. People don't know about it because the internet didn't exist when he was building stuff and his mates were building stuff. And he doesn't even know how to turn a computer on, let alone use a phone. So um, <laughs> that's why no, one, no one's ever really seen these sort of builds before. This vehicle's well-traveled, isn't it? He's done a lot of remote travel around Australia in it. Um, as I we spoke about it over the last, probably I think I've known him for about probably almost 10 years now. And he's told me bits and pieces, but I've never actually got the full stories, but he's done a lot of travel in this car. It's been around for a long time. It's been around for a lot longer than most of the cars that are on the road. Where have you taken it so far? Um, <laughs> I've taken it, done heaps of Brunswick, Collie, all that sort of stuff. Is, How, made, how's it going Brunswick? Oh, good, it's built for it, man. It was, <laughs> it was built for rock climbing this car. So it's, when I first bought it, coming from a Nissan and they're pretty bulletproof and I knew how to drive a Nissan. I was a little bit worried about this car and for the first probably year and a half, I was real like, oh, I'm gonna break it, I'm gonna break it because you know, Land Rovers have got the whole, it's gonna break as soon as you take it off road thing. Uh, and then Mark, the guy who built it, he came out with me one weekend and said, look, you drive it and show me what it can do. And he drove it and I was just like, wow, this thing is an absolute animal. And it's just, yeah, and ever since then, I'm not afraid to throw it around now. Where are you intending on taking it next? Um, I'd love to do the Holland track in it because it's not, you know, it's not overly far from Perth, uh, but doing the Holland track in it would just be cool uh, just because it's, old, it's an old school car. Like everyone's got their coffee machines and all this other, you know, nonsense you don't need <laughs> where I've got a, you know, four litre gravity fed water tank and a, and a, uh, and a billy that I chuck on the fire. Like, when you when you drive this car, and when I go away in this car, I want to try and I try and keep it as old school as I can, because that's this is like the originating of people four wheel driving is you went basic, not you didn't have to take your home with you. Mm. Totally. Yeah. And you still got your luxury of having a thirty five liter fridge. Well, yeah, exactly. I've got the little fridge there that works pretty yeah. good. <laughs> I can tell the vehicle's at a spot where you really like and how it is, how it drives, and the whole feel of it. But is there anything you're going to change to it? When I bought it, I swore that I wouldn't do anything to it, um, just because, just to leave it how it was. To yourself or to him? Nah, to myself. Like, I, okay. and to, like he doesn't care because, like he said, it's not his car anymore, so he doesn't care. But just for me, changing stuff on it seems rude. But for example, the spotlights, they're pretty useless. So. I have got a set of spotlights. I've had these set of spotlights for, well, they're, they're the Light Force Striker, so how long have they been out for? Uh, a couple of years. So I bought, I probably bought those when they first came out for this car, and they've been sitting in my shed ever since, because I just can't bring myself to change the lights on it, because it's just modernising it too much. Yeah. Um, the other thing as well, I thought about changing the snorkel on it, just so it comes out on this side, and it's just a shorter run. Other than that, I'm pretty much just going to leave it exactly how it is. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I just don't want to change it. That's good to hear. Yeah. It's a nice vehicle. It is, yeah. It's cool. Like, we, we have spoke about colour changing it, like blacking the chassis and then just doing it one solid colour, like drab green or something like that. But it's just taking that. Then, it, it, to me, it would feel like I'm trying to claim this car that I built it. That's why if I leave it like this and the people who actually know this vehicle, respect that. I'm never going to claim this vehicle ever. So yeah. it's just a good vehicle to drive. So I think I'll keep it exactly how it is, apart from spotlights and maybe a snorkel. All right, Luke, thanks for 
Thanks Anytime, for bringing this beast out. Anytime. Yeah. yeah it's it was awesome. Good. Yeah, no, it's a good truck and yeah, a lot of people are going to see it now, I guess. Yeah. It's been under wraps it, yeah. for a very long time. The Defender 100.